most people do not know that transformation is warfare a warfare to dethrone thoughts reasonings mindsets information that fights your destiny that fights your greatness i'm about to say something very powerful that i want you to listen to join apostle joshua selman in a life-changing sermon that explores the depth of god's love and wisdom discover practical insights for victorious living and a closer walk with the divine don't miss this opportunity to elevate your spiritual journey and experience the extraordinary stay tuned thoughts mindsets and belief systems have an energy that they emit listen please thoughts mindsets and belief systems they exhibit magnetic properties hear this again thoughts mindsets belief systems reasonings they have an energy every single one of them has an energy that they emit from within you to your environment they exhibit magnetic properties they attract to your life listen people they attract to your life conditions they attract to your life circumstances consistent with that belief this is very powerful i want to show you how transformation leads to victory and how lack of it keeps you in defeat that thoughts mindsets information generally they have power there is an energy that comes from them are we together now and that they exhibit magnetic properties that when trouble comes to you and keeps coming to you you may not believe it but there is something within you magnetizing trouble job said let me show you a scripture job chapter 3 and verse 25 the thing that i greatly feared that was not the only thing he feared but the one he greatly feared was the one that came did you get that job had other fears but the one that was the most dominant fear read it with me one to go for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come unto me this is the mystery of deep calling unto deep that when and even till today terrorists use this strategy to attack people they will send fear and say we are coming we are coming and by the time the people absorb the fear they become incapacitated before the attack they will never come until they inflict fear that was what goliath was doing goliath knew that he would not win an army until he did something to their minds history is full of people dictators who have lived and died they knew this as a formula for victory that if i can penetrate your mind and plant a picture and enthrone that picture to be higher than anything even without an attack you will die when david came goliath do you notice that the first way Goliath started attacking David was through words. As soon as he came, because he would speak to the armies and say, no, these guys are already defeated. The king was afraid. Here was a teenager who stood. And when they began to speak, Goliath said, no, this guy does not sound like the army. Am I a dog that you are coming with me to, with this? And he said, well, that's not the issue. Goliath, you come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in a name. While you did not see me, I was not just in the wilderness. There was a mindset. He told Saul, he said, listen, Saul said, How are you, what, what credentials do you have to allow you to go and fight Goliath? He said, sir, with all due respect, one day I was in the wilderness and a lion came. I chased that lion with my bare hands. I chased the bear with my bare hands. I tore it. There was no social media to post it, but it did not mean the mentality of victory was not in me. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 
it was not his mouth that was speaking his most dominant thoughts you know the dominant thought the knowledge of God he says I come to you in a name the revelation of the name and the victory that it holds was greater than the sight of swords and spears and he said Goliath by that name because David knew he said by run through a troop and by my God I will leap over a wall he knew that a body without a spirit is dead that Goliath was empowered by demon evil spirits that Goliath was not just a beast Goliath stood representing wizardry and that there was a force if you dislodge no matter how large the body is it will come down he had a mentality Jesus did not just defeat Satan because of no he knew you know why Jesus was silent because he was talking anyhow that transferred dominion when he met Adam Adam blamed the Eve Eve blamed the serpent serpent did not blame anybody and so dominion went to him so when Jesus came he was silent even when he had something to say listen please listen to me Poverty has a mindset if it does not find it cannot manifest Wealth has a mindset if it does not find it cannot manifest Causes have a mindset if they don't find they cannot manifest Blessings have a mindset if they don't find they cannot manifest God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12 Abraham did not have the mindset to make that happen. God had to prime him by using the stars and say, count it, he kept failing. He said, so shall thy seed be. Finally, Abraham believed God. That reality became greater than barrenness. And the Bible says it was credited like a transfer. So that transfer could not happen. You know how you make transfer from your account and he says he cannot. It was credited to him as righteousness the anointing has a mindset for it to flow you cannot be a defeated person and you want to liberate others by what thinking no matter how much gallon of oil is poured on you your mindset would deflate the potential was it not the size of the vessel that controlled the oil the oil was never small it was put in a small jar so it looked small what was the prophet's recommendation? Expand the jar. Expand the jar. Thoughts. Belief systems have an energy. Have an energy. Have an energy. Let me tell you this. Let me just leave that one there. Let's not go into those discussions. But just know it for a fact that we are not alone. There are regions beyond the sight of men. There are regions beyond the sight of science. This earth you see is suspended with a foundation that is invisible. Geography says it's floating. The book of Job said it had cornerstones. It was built with a foundation. There is a part of earth that is visible. That's the part we see. But there is a part that is mysteriously invisible. This is what makes God, God. We can stretch our knowledge. The Bible said there is no searching of his understanding. So there are certain portions where people have gone to. Is the reason why when you base your Christian experience on just visions and extra biblical encounters, you may be sincere, but you will mislead a lot of people. Three of us can go to heaven and go to different regions of heaven. We return with our encounters and we may document things that may end up misleading the saints. It is the reason why the believer's point of focus must be scripture. I've had many encounters, but none of those encounters become a basis for doctrine. Are we together now? I say this because particularly if you are called into the prophetic ministry, you have to be careful. The strength of your encounters, just because the angel that appeared, how many of them do you know? An angel can appear to you genuinely once you are not on earth you call the name of where you are heaven you may be wrong there are many many regions many regions are we together many regions the Bible says so I don't want to go into all of those but there are many regions even when you are out of the earth there are dimensions in the spirit 
there are many things here now but the dimension we are in now cannot allow us see them like angels you have to be open to that dimension to see but they see what you are seeing are we together there are dimensions where you don't need gravity there are dimensions where you don't need memory there are dimensions where you don't need to speak to communicate it is another agency that is for communication so it's important we manage encounters with wisdom i'm just digressing in a minute to say that so that the strength of your experience does not just become your supernatural encounters i've done a teaching on that you can get it to something i wrote here depends on a belief system defeat depends on a belief system being victimized by curses and yokes is mentally dependent not just spiritually dependent not just demonic increase and prosperity depends on a belief system manifesting excellence and leadership depends on a belief system walking in the anointing depends on a belief system you can be saved and still be a victim of limitations and frustrations you can be saved yes sir you can be genuinely saved and still be a victim of limitations and frustrations that plagued you before you got saved that means those things were there and even after you got saved they did not recognize it the oppression still remained and yet you are genuinely born again is why many believers doubt their salvation once you believe in the name of the lord genuinely with your heart you are saved but because you do not understand the journey beyond salvation you see that now that there is a journey beyond salvation in addition to your being saved the journey the way now then the truth then life you will find out that at a point you say look i'm just going I'm, I'm, i don't think i'm a child of god i don't my, this my salvation is not authentic it is but it is that the knowledge of god has not been exalted in your mind above every other knowledge are we together do you know why you come to church every week it is that project called transformation what you are receiving now there is an ascendance there is a warfare happening in your mind that's the reason why sometimes you hear some things and you're like ah this thing is hard should i believe should i not believe other mindsets that are there when you see people respect them and honor them carry a gift and go and give your boss and your superior whether you like them or not and say thank you for the privilege of working here your pride belief is on me uh-huh that belief system but by the time you keep hearing and hearing you see what is happening one day the spirit of god who is aiding that transformation process brings you to a point where that exaltation happens let me tell you there is an energy there is a force that begins to emanate from you that force is what draws bad friends to people or draws good friends that force is what draws gifted people to ministries there are ministries that will never lack gifted people it is a grace but the grace comes through a mindset there is an above only mindset are we together now the bible is a compendium of mindsets giving you a chance to choose the one you will use with the wisdom of an architect to design your life you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth these blessings will come upon you is a mindset when men say there is a casting down they are not verses they are mindsets you can buy them with humility and place them and begin to ward the limiting mindsets oh i think i i i don't it's a mindset why is it unnecessary it's a mindset it leads people away from god you see that it's a mindset but the owner the holiest person of all owns the earth and owns everything and yet he did not backslide by owning the earth the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him and yet his holiness did not diminish with the presence of these things so where did you get the mindset that increase and abundance just diminishes you no it reflects something that is already within you you don't need to have money to not be serious with god 
Are you seeing that now? It's a mindset. Oh, increase does not matter. It doesn't matter whether crowds of people come. It does not. It's a mindset. When you know that salvation is for all men, salvation is a business of numbers. Numbers matter when you're talking about salvation. But that does not mean if there are not many people, you are not doing well. But salvation is a business of numbers. So you would see men like our father in the Lord that the Jew, he would say, plant churches around, let there be so willing. And in his, at his age, he's still going around holding light up campaigns. I've had the honor of preaching in one, I think at least one of them. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm a young man, but what is such an old man doing? It's a mindset. One day I remember telling um, one of his people and said, please tell daddy to rest. And he said, don't waste your time. He will not rest. He said, we'll rest when we go here, when we go out of this world. It's a mindset. Another lazy young man has an arrival mentality with one million naira. It's a mindset. Another arrogant preacher with nothing is a mindset. Joshua Selman, arrogant at this level. But there's somebody who never arrives. Arrival is a mindset. The passion to continue is a mindset. And all of these mindsets exert energy. Let me tell you, you are being affected by my mindset. If I plateau, you will be surprised that the little you have done, you will become comfortable. When you see champions continue, it swallows up what you are doing and you go back and say, my God, if this person can do like this, it's a mindset. When you see anointed people still praying, and fasting and studying the word it's a mindset that there are still more lands to conquer are we together now yes please believers hear me if this sermon does not affect you then forget about liberty demons used to oppress me as a preacher i've told you my story not as a believer as a preacher i was already anointed i would go for programs and great miracles will happen and return back and lie down and here comes these spirits to my room i said what is all this nonsense how can i be ministering in the power of god and then i return back and they are oppressing me because they have no respect for whether you are called pastor whether you are called prophet once they find something that attracts them they will come and they will not just come they will prevail satan cometh to me poverty cometh to me prosperity cometh to me so all the realities that you need and hate in life you are like in a permit me to use the word a, a swimming pool that is full of everything poverty is flowing around you wealth is flowing around you increase is flowing around you but the one that comes to you is the one that finds a component within you that draws it to you this is the concept of what we know to be familiar spirits. You know why they are familiar? They want certain occurrences to remain in certain lives, in certain territories. So they study the mindset that attracts that trouble and they create a stronghold around it so that everybody from that family thinks that way. Grandfather transfers it to father. So the evil continues. If a child stands up and says, I'm breaking it, you don't break it by saying, I rebuke it alone. You rebuke it, but you start re-engineering your thinking. Another kind of energy is now sent to your village not me not me and the curses will come but they will not meet someone of that kind of bloodline again because something has been altered are we together here I wrote something here pastors and ministers with all due respect must realize the sensitivity of the roles that they play in literally determining the destinies of people and by extension the destiny of a nation i think it was last year or so i was in the u.s and one of the things i was studying was what made the u.s the u.s at least in its state of glory that we know i didn't just want to celebrate because i believe that i have a contribution to helping Nigeria, helping Africa to become a reflection of the glory of God. And it will not just happen by preaching verses. There was a mindset. Last I traveled to the US, I had the opportunity to travel and pray where America started. 
and I had the opportunity to visit the monument of the forefathers and I saw a few things that were written there the tenants that were the foundations of America I said this is it this is it no nation please listen to my message how nations are built it was an Independence Day message how nations are built their policies policies are products of mindsets translated into law are we together if you believe in equality you believe in excellence it's a mindset you will simply articulate it and write it it becomes part of your constitution so if Africa is the way we are the, the problem is not just the troubles that we have around we have to go back and re-examine the frame the foundation upon what listen you must have the courage to probe your belief systems how did we get here who believed what that made this kind of nonsense are we together it's important the difference between a great ministry and a limiting struggling ministry is not just the will of God is the belief system of the leaders what mindset listen ladies and gentlemen you did not just come here just by your will I tell you I hate to be the one to say this but there is an energy that is exerted from transformation and because it is God's principle he will weigh you and he will bring men that reflect your growth and transformation at this level of growth it will be stupid for me to believe that God would trust me with the kind of daddy Geo's influence that God would trust me with the kind of reach of say the RCCG globally one day we'll get there but the truth is that we are not yet there there is something they know the very fact that we have not learned the secret of their humility is a sign that there's something we don't know as we conclude this enlightening sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman let the depth of knowledge shared today be a catalyst of your ongoing educational journey apply the principles of wisdom understanding and divine insight in your pursuit of knowledge remember ed education is not mainly about information but a transformation of the mind and spirit carry the touch of learning into your studies professions and daily life may you continually grow in wisdom and impart your spheres of influence positively go forth empowered to be a beacon of knowledge and light and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe so you can be the first to get our video god bless you see you in the next